So we're talking about surges and overlockers and sewing machines. Well, not really sewing machines. We want to know what the difference between a serger, an overlocker and a sewing machine. The sewing machine is a needle up and down with one bobbin inside to create a locking stitch for your fabrics to hold them together. Okay, so that's a sewing machine and you can stitch at any point over the fabric. Whereas a serger and an overcast overlocking machine are both the same. So an overlocker is a machine that casts a thread over the edge and locks it into place with the needle. So if we talk about overlockers from day one, so we talk about the serge, this fabric that came along and it was fraying. What we wanted to do was create a stitch that goes across the edge of the fabric and is locked into place so that this fabric won't fray again. So that's essentially the purpose of this serger, of this overlocker. And what we wanted to do was create that stitch around the edge. So the way to do it was have a thread that goes around the top, a thread that goes around the bottom, that they locked, they intertwine on the edge, and then we need to hold them in place. And the way they're held in place is with the needle stitching all the way through. So that thread, I mean, that's a very rough way of explaining it, but essentially that's it. It's all very mechanical, but there's not much to it. So an overlocker is exactly the same as a serger. Okay, so now the different types of overlockers and sergers. Let's stick with calling it an overlocker because I'm in the UK and I've always known them as overlockers. So there are lots of differences between overlockers. Some can do two thread, some do three and four thread, some do five thread, okay? And some do all two, three, four and five thread. The loopers, they're causing loops and they're being looped into the needle thread. So you need a needle thread to lock those stitches. So that's how you get your three thread. Now with the fourth thread, what happens is now you can use this machine to sew your fabrics together. So now you're not only creating a nice neat edge on your fabric, but you're actually creating a sewing stitch as well. So now you can sew fabrics together. Now you can move up to your five thread. Now your five thread overlocker isn't actually an overlocker, it's a combi machine. It's combined with the machine, which is a cover stitch machine. And a cover stitch machine creates stitches on the top of your fabric and the loops underneath. So you can now hem fabrics. So lots of people like to buy a cover stitch machine for knitted fabrics. Okay, so what's a two thread overlock? So your two thread overlock creates a nice stitch for you to have it narrow with least threads. So that's for things like uh, that are lightweight. So you don't want that third thread causing a weight. So if you're creating something that needs to be floaty, uh, dance material, something um, that's airy, you want to use only two threads. Now the advantage of a two thread overlock is that you can create what's known as a two thread flat lock. And if you change and adjust the tensions, so how loose those threads are in your fabric, you can have a flat lock seam. So you can pull the fabrics apart and layer them so they sit on top of each other rather than sit poking out of your fabric. But to have a two thread overlock, you will need a gadget because you can't just have two threads in the machine and create a two thread overlock. You need to create the loop to go on the top and at the bottom, but you can't do that with just two threads in there. So what you have to do is use a gadget that sort of fake makes the second loop. So you're using the upper looper to fake an upper looper thread using the lower looper thread. So you end up with a sort of a figure of eight being formed with the middle cross point at the edge of your fabric. So then the needle can catch it and create that flat lock seam. So that's what, how you create it. You need a gadget. So not all overlockers have that. And have got one here. Um, Brother are, um, have the marketing strategy of making sure the lower priced models uh, machine don't give you the facility to have a two thread overlock. And the reason is because they want to upsell you to a machine that does give you a 
for a two thread overlock adapter because it's just a little gadget that you need to put in there to sort of stop the upper looper working as a looper and fake create an upper looper using the bottom looper so it's a little it sounds complicated actually isn't as complicated as I'm making it sound. So the next thing we need to move on to is a differential feed. That's an important feature on overlockers. You might find floating around on the market machines that don't have differential feed. It's probably a new thing, but um, most machines will have differential feed. It's your second set of feed dogs. So if you imagine on your sewing machine, you have one set of feed dogs. So that feed dogs, is feeding your fabric through your machine and allowing it to go at the correct speed for the timing of this top stitch and the bottom uh, thread to come through and give you a nice even feed. On an overlocker, the machine is going really fast at around 1200 stitches per minute, faster or slower. And on a sewing machine, it's only going at about 800 stitches per minute. So you're already speeding it up by 50%. So what happens in, in order for your machine not to you know, sort of fly away with all this fabric, they have created a heavier push on the presser foot so that it can cope with that fast speed. And with it going at such a fast speed, what happens is the fabric is either getting dragged through, causing the stitches to not be even, or being sort of stretched through. The fabric's been stretched if it's a looser weave, so you might find, you know, things like your chiffon being stretched through your knitted fabrics, your woolen being stretched through. So what they've created is a second set of feed dogs. So your second set of feed dogs, which is at the front, allow you to feed the fabric in with less going in or more going in. So it's not the speed at which it goes. It feels like it's going in faster or slower, but it's actually the less amount of fabric going in or more fabric going in. And I've done a naked overlocker video showing you the feed dogs moving. And I'll show you a little bit of that, but I'll put the link above so you can have a watch and understand it a little bit more. But the feed dogs, you can either reduce the how much fabric is being fed through, or you can increase how much fabric's being fed through. So if you reduce it, you know, your things like your chiffon or your knit or your stretch fabric, if you reduce how much is being fed through, it will feed through slower, so it feels like it's going in slower. So the second set of feed dogs, which are feeding in, doesn't pull on your fabric and doesn't stretch it too much and force it through. So the needles will actually get a chance to stitch them properly. But you might get the other incidents where you want to gather your fabric. So we've got fabric which is heavier and it's woven and it's very stiff. You want to be able to get that through and fed um, so more goes in. So it feels like it's going in faster. So thicker fabrics will need a higher differential feed. So things you might want to say, we'll do an extreme. You want to gather your fabric. So if you want to create frills on your fabric, what you want to do is you want to increase the feed. So you're feeding more fabric in. So another thing people like to ask about is the stitch width. Now, I want to talk to you about the stitch width. There are only two widths of stitches. You've got two needles and your needles allow you a wide stitch, which is a quarter of an inch, typically, and thereabout. Or you've got a narrow stitch, which is one needle, which is on your right. So you've got wide stitch or a narrow stitch, and that's it. People often confuse that with the knife width which is your cutting width. So that's completely something else. What happens, do you remember when I talked about this wool fabric? We want to create a lock at the top and at the bottom where they intertwine on the edge of the fabric. If you cut too much fabric away, your fabric doesn't fill up this gap between your loops. So if it doesn't fill it up, it looks like you've got threads hanging over the edge of your fabric, but you do and that's not great. You need to fill that space up. You need to fill up that loop. So you need to adjust your knife so you're not cutting so much fabric away. So you've got more fabric to fill up that space. And the other thing happens is that you end up having too much fabric inside your loops and it's all crumpled up and it just looks messy and it looks, you know, all squiggly and not nice. So you're cutting 
knotting off fabric waste. And that takes us to stitch length. So we've done the stitch width, now we're talking about the stitch length. The stitch length is an easy one. It's measured in millimetres and it's the distance between each loop. So you've got your loops forming on your fabric. If you increase them, you get bigger loops. If you decrease it, you get narrower loops. You get more loops per millimetre. That's an overlocker 101. What's an overlocker? It's the same thing as a serger. It finishes off the edge of your fabric, gives it a nice finish. You can sew with your overlocker. It, as long as you've got the settings right, they do work. You can't change the style of stitches. Um, they, it just basically overlocks the edge of your fabric. You can adjust it to give different types of stitches, which we'll talk about in a next video. And we'll also talk about in another video, how to keep your overlocker perfect condition. Doesn't take much, but I will share those tips with you next time. I will see you soon. Thumbs up if you like the video or found it very helpful. And make sure you subscribe if you would like to see more. Keep in touch.